Welcome true crime enthusiasts to another episode of True Crime Mysteries with Miss Murder. I'm your host, Miss Murder, and today we're unravelling one of the most horrifying and tragic events in recent Australian history, the Bondi Junction Massacre. In this episode, we'll take you through the shocking timeline of the attack, delve into the personal stories of the victims, and explore the systemic failures in mental health care that made this tragedy possible. Prepare yourself for a detailed examination of an event that turned a day of routine shopping into a scene of unimaginable horror. Set the stage for our story. On April 13th, 2024, Westfield Bondi Junction, a bustling shopping centre in Sydney's eastern suburbs, becomes the site of one of the most brutal attacks in recent memory. Joel Couchy, a 40-year-old man with a history of severe mental illness, went on a violent rampage that left six people dead and many others severely injured. In this episode, we'll cover the events of that fateful day in detail, share the heartbreaking stories of the victims, and discuss the broader implications for mental health care in Australia. At about 12.30 p.m., Joel Couchy arrived at Westfield Bondi Junction. A 40-year-old from Queensland, he entered the Westfield Shopping Centre. Couchy had a well-documented history of mental health issues, including schizophrenia. But despite this, no effective intervention or preventative measures had been put in place. His erratic behaviour goes unnoticed by security and staff until it's too late. Couchy's presence in the shopping centre is marked by a sense of growing unease amongst those who observed him. At around 1pm, shoppers and staff begin to notice Couchy's unsettling behaviour. Witnesses report that he appears agitated and disorientated. Despite these observations, no immediate action is taken to address his presence. This early lapse in recognising the potential threat sets the stage for the ensuing tragedy. Couchy's behaviour escalates as he begins to act more aggressively at around 1.30. Witnesses see him holding a knife and displaying increasing erratic movements. Although some shoppers and staff become concerned, the gravity of the situation is still not fully understood. This period is marked by a growing sense of dread as people start to realise the potential for violence. Couchy's rampage begins at about 2pm with the fatal stabbing of Ferez Tahir, a 30-year-old security guard. Ferez, who was on duty at the time, bravely attempts to intervene and protect others. Despite his courageous efforts, he falls victim to Couchy's violence. His death is a stark reminder of the risks faced by those who work to ensure public safety. At about 2.05pm, Dawn Singleton, a 25-year-old bride-to-be, is next. Dawn and her fiancé were in the shopping centre to prepare for their wedding. What should have been a joyful outing turns into a nightmare. Couchy approaches Dawn and attacks her, cutting short her dreams of a future filled with love and happiness. Her death is particularly poignant because it occurred during what was supposed to be a time of celebration. At about 2.10pm, Ashley Good, a 38-year-old osteopath and new mother, is targeted next. Ashley is shopping with her infant daughter and her maternal instinct to protect her child is evident. Despite her efforts to shield her baby, she is fatally stabbed. Her death leaves her young family grappling with the unimaginable loss of a loving mother and partner. At about 2.15pm, Jade Young, a 47-year-old architect, is attacked along with 55-year-old artist Pikir Dashia. Jade, who was known for her dedication to her career and family, becomes one of Couchy's victims in this senseless act of violence. At the same time, Pikria's death represents a significant loss to the artistic community. Both women's lives are tragically cut short, highlighting the indiscriminate nature of Couchy's attack. At about 2.20 p.m., Leah Barko, a 35-year-old Ukrainian immigrant, is among the later victims. As Couchy stabs her, he chillingly says, catch you. Leah is left bleeding on the floor, surrounding by the chaos of her attack. A passerby in a green t-shirt comes to her aid, helping to staunch the bleeding. Leah's survival and subsequent recovery showcase the incredible resilience of those who endure such violence. Her story is a testament to human strength and the impact of kindness in moments of crisis. At around 2.25pm, emergency services are called to the scene as the attack 
continues. Paramedics and police arrived and worked swiftly to tend to the injured and secure the area. The chaotic scenes are a testament to the bravery and efficiency of first responders. New South Wales police confront Couchy and despite attempts to de-escalate the situation, he remains a significant threat. Inspector Amy Scott, in a decisive and tragic action, shoots and kills Couchy, ending the rampage and preventing further casualties. At about 3 p.m., with the attacker neutralised, the focus shifts on treating the wounded and managing the aftermath. The shopping centre, once a place of commerce and community, becomes the site of mourning and recovery. The psychological impact on witnesses and survivors is profound, with many grappling with the trauma of the day's events. Ashley Good, a 38-year-old osteopath, was a devoted mother to baby Harriet. Ashley's death while shopping for essentials with her infant is a devastating loss. Her family is left to cope with the absence of a loving and dedicated mother. The trauma inflicted on her family, especially her young child, underscores the personal impact of this tragedy. Dawn Singleton was a 25-year-old bride-to-be with a whole life ahead of her. Her tragic death during a routine shopping trip casts a dark shadow over what should have been a joyous time. Dawn's loss is deeply felt by her fiancé and her family, who now face a future marked by grief instead of celebration. Jade Young, a 47-year-old architect, was known for her dedication to both her profession and her family. Her death represents a profound loss to her loved ones and highlights the senselessness of the violence that took her life. Jade's commitment to her career and family makes her loss all the more tragic. Pikria Dashia, a 55-year-old artist, was a creative force whose work touched many. Her death represents a significant loss to the artistic community and those who knew her for her kindness and creativity. Vikria's contributions to the arts and her warm personality will be deeply missed. Yixan Chang, a 27-year-old international student from China, was pursuing her educational dreams in Australia. Her death is a poignant reminder of the vulnerability of individuals far from home. Ying Hang's loss is felt by both her family and by the broader community, highlighting the global impact of the attack. Faraz Tahir, a 30-year-old security guard, displayed incredible bravery in the face of danger. His attempt to protect others during the attack is a testament to his courage and selflessness. Faraz's actions underscore the bravery of those who risk their lives to keep others safe. Leah Barko, a 35-year-old Ukrainian immigrant, survived the attack but faced a long and difficult recovery. Her resilience in the face of such violence is remarkable. Leah's story of survival and recovery highlights the strength of those who endure traumatic experiences and the impact of kindness from strangers. The Bondi Junction massacre has brought to light several deficiencies in Australia's mental health system. Joel Couchy's attack underscores the urgent need for comprehensive mental health support and intervention. The response to this tragedy has highlighted the systemic failures that allowed such an event to occur. Elizabeth Young, the mother of Jade Young has become a powerful advocate for mental health reform. After the attack, Elizabeth's family struggled to find adequate support. Her son PJ, who lives in Tasmania, faced significant challenges in accessing mental health care. Elizabeth's experience illustrates the inconsistencies in support across different regions. Her impassioned call for change is a critical component of the ongoing conversation about mental health care reform. Independent MP Allegra Spender has been vocal about the need for a national approach to mental health care. Describing the current system as a patchwork, Spender emphasises the need for long-term investment in prevention and early intervention. Her advocacy reflects the growing recognition of mental health as a critical public issue. A May report from New South Wales Health revealed a nearly 30% shortfall in service capacity for those with severe and complex mental health needs. This shortage is part of a broader national crisis with estimates suggesting that up to 170,000 people nationwide are unable to access the care they require. The breakdown of mental health services represents a profound failure to protect those at risk and prevent tragedies like the Bondi Junction attack. National Mental Health Commissioner Kerry Hawkins has highlighted the plight of hundreds of thousands of Australians living in quiet despair. The systemic inadequacies in mental health care are a human rights issue that requires urgent attention. Hawkins' remarks underscore the need for a compassionate and effective response to mental health challenges. The Bondi Junction massacre serves as a chilling reminder of the consequences of systemic failure and the urgent need for comprehensive mental health reform. The stories of the victims, the bravery of first responders and the call for 
change all converge in this tragic event. If this episode has shed light on the complexities of the Bondi Junction attack and the broader implications for mental health care, please consider subscribing, sharing, leaving a comment below. Your support is crucial in our mission to raise awareness and advocate for meaningful change. Until next time, my friends, stay curious, stay vigilant, and remember, every shadow holds a story waiting to be uncovered.